What do you get when self-proclaimed scientists try and grift on Gamergate 2 and Stellar Blade? You get the best article about Stellar Blade that's ever been written in the most comedically ridiculous fashion. Welcome back to Words Paradise, I'm your host Leon Idol, and now I want to give a shout out to Packer Girl because she does great work and she's the one that led me to this article from Inverse. So uh, Inverse Gaming Editor Shannon Liao's latest article, Stellar Blade and the Male Gaze, defends Sweet Baby Inc. And Alyssa Mercante. So uh, we're going to get into this article. And a lot of you guys might be asking, what's Inverse? They're not one of the big players. Big. They're not Kotaku. They're not Polygon. They're not the Mary Sue. Well, Inverse, for those of you that don't know, Inverse is the coolest place to get smarter. We explore the science of anything, innovations that we shape our tomorrow, ideas that stretch our minds, our goal is to motivate the next generation to build a better world, which is all leftist gobbledygook. Inverse takes a scientific approach to analyzing culture and cultural approach to talking about science. Since our launch, the so point is, you get, this is about to be the most pretentious academic analysis of Stellar Blade in this article titled Stellar Blade and the Male Gaze. So let me get into this before we do hit that subscribe button. I'm a nerdy news channel. I bring you nerdy news every day and uh Oh, strap in, boys and girls, because this one's going to be a doozy. Stellar Blade, the upcoming science action, sci-fi action RPG from Korean studio Shift Up, has been thrust into the center of video game culture wars that seem as old as gaming itself. The fight can be mostly clearly seen of late in the vocal pushback against narrative consulting company Sweet Baby Inc. Get this. For pushing to have more, gasp, you diverse female characters. Now... I don't know a whole lot about science, I am but a, a humble nerd, but I'm pretty sure the idea of science is to be impartial. And when you're writing an article, and you're on a website that claims you take a scientific approach to culture, you ought not be using terms like gasp, which just makes you sound like a reactionary prom, prom queen cosplaying as a scientist. Also, that is not what uh, Sweet Baby Inc. was doing, you know, pushing for diverse female characters. Sweet Baby Inc., as you all know, it was a narrative company, a, a consulting company that is trying to push for left-leaning ideology, which includes all manner of forced diversity throughout all games, all narratives. So, but of course, they're going to downplay it here. They're going to defend Sweet Baby Inc., just like Pack Girl said. They're going to defend Alyssa Mercante. But they say a whole a lot more than that. A select few Steam and Twitter users are up in arms. A select few, as if it's not to like, what, 400,000 almost Steam users just on the Sweet Baby Inc. detected page? But yes, a select few. You know, as again, people who want to claim they're scientists, scientists very, very rarely get a sample size of something like 400,000. That is quite rare in the realm of science from every poll and study that I've ever read, and despite my claims earlier that I'm not a scientist, uh, believe it or not, I do enjoy reading that sort of stuff on my downtime. Now the vocal few are pressing the uh, buxom and bounce, uh, praising the buxom and bouncy protagonist of Stellar Blade. Eve, they say, evokes a time they miss when women in games used to be titillating and attractive. She caters to the so-called male gaze, an academic term coined by the film theorist Laura Mulvey in 1973. Oh, okay, so, so this is an academic term coined by a film theorist. Now, if it's such an academic term, why is that? Now, I'm, I'm gonna be real. Like, there's no there's no doctor in front of Laura Mulvey's, uh, Mul Mulvey's name. And again, gr granted, you don't exactly need to have those sort of, you know, credentials that come from a four-year degree that your parents paid for to, you know, to be an academic. I just, I love that they're trying to appeal to authority. That way it makes them seem more credible when appeal to authority is one of the most common fallacies you will see in any sort of debate. The male gaze is often portrayed as seeing a skintily clad woman on screen being bad, according to Dr. Matt Denny, a film and television studies teaching follow at the University of Warwick. Denny adds the gaze is about an assumed straight male spectator. You know, that is the target demographic for the vast majority of gamers, so... Makes sense. Developers shipped up appears to be leaning into the male gaze heavily. You want to know why? Because since the dawn of the human age, people found out that sex sells. There was a Family Guy sketch about it like 20 years ago when like a caveman version of Peter couldn't invented a wheel and couldn't sell the wheel. Then he has Lois, like a caveman version of Lois, get scantily clad and sells the wheel. Like it is very, very common knowledge that sex sells. So while trying to lean into the male gaze, they are ensuring that people buy their game, which is a brilliant marketing strategy, one that we've seen all throughout our lives growing up, until very recently, when these prudes, or ironically enough, so pro-only fans, decided that sex selling was a bad thing if you're selling it to straight white dudes. On Twitter account and in interviews, it's made sure to draw close attention to the fact that Eve's body is taken from scans of Korean model Shin Jae-un's. Game director Kim Hyung-tae, uh, uh, fucking Korean names, man, you guys make great games, but I'm, I prefer something that's not 
such a tongue twister. He uh, justified the choice of uh, body models, saying, We wanted to come up with the most attractive looking body for the user, which, if you're going to be staring at your avatar for God knows how many hours playing this game, you would like it to be an attractive body, whether it be male or female, mind you, as someone that you know usually plays female characters in WoW. I'm also not opposed to playing as big jet dudes, because that's going to be a whole lot more fun and interesting and full of escapism and entertainment than playing as some slovenly fat trucker looking mofo. PlayStation's promotional materials back this up, with Instagram trailers focusing on the revealing outfits player can dress Eve up in. Shift Up did not return a request for comment. You wanna know why they didn't return a request for comment? Because as Maxim, as, as Maxim South Korea has shown us, they do not give a good goddamn about the American sensibilities. In fact, they have made, they've openly made fun of the American sensibilities in so many articles, so many newsreels, it's actually been quite amazing. So yeah, why would they give you any sort of comment when they already aren't gonna take you seriously, despite your self-aggrandizing like how you were, you know, taking a scientific look at culture? Denny points out that the textbook male gaze, a Attractive to who? asked Denny. To what gender? What sexuality? What nationality? A lot of the choice is assuming a lot of things about who the developers think the player is going to be. Is it, is it wrong to assume that a bunch of straight dudes are going to be playing the game with the sexy women? In fact, also, a lot of straight women are going to be playing the game with the sexy women. You want to know why? Because it's very common knowledge that women also like looking at fine female forms in their media. This is asking every single woman I've spoken to, and believe it or not, you know, you can look at me and think I'm some basement-dwelling goblin, but I actually speak to a lot of women specifically here on the platform of YouTube, and every single one of them has told me the same thing. They like looking at good-looking women in their movies and in their video games and they imagine good-looking women in their harlequin romance novels because the human mind is just innately attracted to good-looking things. While Eve's body was made from a scan of shins, her face was made in-house and shin wasn't used for motion capture. They didn't choose an athlete or a martial artist or even an actor, said Denny. You don't want shin as a performer, you just want her from the neck down. It seems to be very much a statement of the parts of this woman that are of value. Again, look at them trying to, try, trying to state that this game is inherently and scientifically misogynistic because they're using someone like Dr. Denny who's got credentials and that he probably, again, what, what are these social sciences or as I prefer to call them, pseudosciences. Dr. Poppy Wield, senior lecturer and me, again, using another doctor, a, a Dr. Poppy Wild, sorry, yeah, because again, appeal to authority, you gotta appeal, appeal, appeal. Senior lecturer and meter of communication at Birmingham School of Media explains the male gaze isn't so simple in video games. If we're thinking about gaze as creating a subject position, isn't the same as just looking at an object because the avatar is kind of active subject in that as well. Based on trailers, Eve seemed a rather active participant, but recently released demo paints a different picture. While Eve may demonstrate mastery in combat, outside of the battle, her absent personality makes her more of a doll than an action figure. Now hold on, you want to judge the entire character off of a demo? Off of some trailers? I mean, if, if it were me, and I was trying to show a demo of my game, and I want to sell the game, it would be a demo for how the game plays, because you're going to be spending hours upon hours playing it. That's the part the demo should show off. We don't need walking simulator story trailers that show us everything about the world and the character. I I'm, I'm sorry, there's no incentive to buy the game if that's what they did. But again, it's just going to show that these individuals have got absolutely no idea how marketing works or how video games work, despite the fact that they claim to be a space for geeks. Again, how many of you guys have even heard of Inverse? The lack of performance attached to Eve's body has already been noted by internet culture writer, <laughs> internet culture writer Gita Jack because that is a job title now. Even doesn't, Eve doesn't seem to have any reaction to her own sexiness. There is no knowing facial expressions, no flipping of her long ponytail, which players can short, uh, shorten in the options menu. She has no idle animation except when she's on a ladder. She just stands there. She's sexy, but doesn't know it. She's athletic and acrobatic, but entirely controllable. If she did know, she can move herself. It would shatter the illusion of many of the gamers championing her because she'd have the agency to be able to reject them rather than simply be controlled by them. Look, there's that there's that very common joke that um, men, let's be real, aren't very smart. Like like we see it in TV all the time. We see it in every sitcom. You got the woman, the, the, the mom of the house, and you got the big dumb dad who doesn't even know how to put diapers on the kids. And, and, and now you're acting like, you're acting like that stereotype isn't a thing. In this sense, you're almost giving, uh, you're almost giving men credit when you say things like they, uh, that the men knowingly want to just think of her as an object because if she had agency, she'd be able to reject them. And I'm here to say, in this instance, no, the sitcoms are right. When dudes are sitting there playing video games, sure, Eve will be nice to look at for the first 20 minutes, 30 minutes, hour, whatever it be. But once the tunnel vision of actually gaming sets in, 
That is what the gay, the, the, the male gaze is going to be about. Gazing the world, gazing at the, uh, you know, the enemies, the boss fights, trying to gaze at the reaction time to know that we've hit the dodge button just right, or the shield button just right. So, when you state that, uh, you know, she would have the agency to tell the gamers to fuck off, basically, the male gamers, how do you know that she would even do that to begin with? You said earlier, she doesn't even have a personality. Maybe her personality would be one that I've seen very, very commonly amongst women that they love to be ogled at, because let's be real, we've all gone to the bar, or the library, or the pub, or out in public or wherever it may be, and you, you can pick him out, and you can take a look at a woman and be like, oh yeah, that's a woman that wants to be looked at, but the moment she catches you looking at her, she'll make a big stink about it and pretend she didn't want to. And then there's the women that are just openly A-OK -okay with being looked at, they love the attention, they feed up the attention, they are attention vampires and succubi, and if that's a personality trait, that's A-OK -okay as well. Maybe Eve would be that kind. Again, you don't know, because you already said earlier that she's got no personality of her own. You're making a lot of assumptions here purely in effort to pretend to be academic and make men look bad. But it's not about making games less sexy, Denny says. It's about making games more sexy for more people. Well, we've gotten a lot of that in the last several years, and it hasn't translated to very great sales on account of 18,000 layoffs in the last uh, 15 months. And as I hear, Take Two, the developers, you know, uh, part of Rocksteady, going to be laying off even more people. I think something uh, along the lines of like 1,500 more people. So we might be almost up to 20,000 layoffs in 15 months. But uh, sure, go ahead and try and keep making games more sexy for more people. It's definitely banging it in the sales direction. The way we gaze changes in video games is it often depends on the differences pre uh, present between gameplay and cutscenes. A lot of the time, we aren't really looking at the avatar, we're looking through the avatar and with the avatar, says Wild, which is exactly what I said earlier, mind you. This is most obvious during Stellar Blade's combat. All eyes are on the enemies, waiting for an opening to counter a dodge. Even Eve is a blur, defying any gaze that would seek to isolate one part of her body from the devastatingly effective hole. During cutscenes... <laughs> Sorry, I probably shouldn't have laughed at hole. I'm a professional. During cutscenes, the perspective and gaze changes. There's something there in showing the physical potential of that body type with combat and athleticism, Denny notes. It's just not nice to look at. You get to the cutscenes, and every single one of those narrative sequences starts with a camera pointed at her bum. I can't take the word bum seriously. I, I don't know if these people are British or what, but, like, that's just... <sighs> That's doing something different. There's also a robot who follows Eve around during exploration segments, shining a light that frequently highlights her behind. Eve's body is both the site of empowerment and objectification, depending on how we're invited to look at it or through it. I mean, she is in fact an object on account of she's not real. So it would make sense to objectify a literal object. Also, she's a, an android if I recall. She's an android or a robot in the game. So she would still be an object even if she were technically real because, again, robots are freaking objects. You could think of Eve as the culmination of a long line of characters constructed by the male gaze, explicitly or not, from Lara Croft to the various concubines, Kratos beds in the original God of War trilogy, sex minigames. Plenty of women in video games are designed to be ogled. This is especially true in Shift Up's previous game, Destiny Child, which featured lots of anime women players could dress up. This is why you might see an NSFW nearly nude skin Eve has as the culmination of such characters. It makes the game more challenging by turning off Eve's shield, but why believes this may be more of an incentive than a deterrence. Yeah, because gamers are going to want to be good at playing the game, and the best way to test your skill is going to be using the least amount of, of, of defensive items. Like, when I play Resident Evil on the I mean, Resident Evil 1, the remake, on professional mode, Jill goes down after, like, two bites. Like, like you get bit by a zombie twice, boom, you're dead. That means you want to have the skill to survive the zombie fights, whether it be you're dodging, you're shooting them, whatever it may be, because it shows you're a skilled player. And for skilled players like myself, they can beat professional mode in under three hours using only a knife. It makes you feel really damn accomplished. Now, granted, I do play as Jill wearing the Resident Evil 3 tube top because, again, I'm a dude and like to look at sexy women, but that's neither here nor there. She likes the subversive play it has on the stereotype of feminine armor in games being a metallic bikini, while masculine armor is full of chainmail. I'm gonna stop this right here. This whole masculine armor full of chainmail shit is so damn annoying. Conan the Barbarian was always exposed. When you watch Dragon Ball Z and Goku's in that main big bad final fight, what's he always doing? 
wherein nothing. His clothes have been ripped off and his abs and his pecs are all rippling as he's charging a spirit bomb or a Kamehameha. Dudes get just as much showy skin in their action meal formulas as women do. Let's be real. Like, like, it is truly not that big of a difference. He-Man, Conan, Goku, the list can go on and on. There's there, How often in the Spider-Man movies is Tom Holland's mask off so that we can look at his pretty boyishly charming face, his good looks to ogle, as you so you know e easily put it. Again, I could go on with this article. It's notably longer, but we didn't even get to the part where they defended Alyssa Mercante and Sweet Baby Ink. Well, a little bit Sweet Baby Ink, but the point is, if you guys want to read this article, I'll link it in the, in the comments down below or in, in the uh, in the description because it actually is quite hilarious. But the fact that Inverse, a, a, a company that none of us have ever heard of, that are not part of the gaming cultural zeitgeist in any way, shape, or form, want to grift on this because they know it's the next hot big topic that they can probably make some money on, maybe make some ad rev. Because hey, Kotaku's failing. Someone has to. Uh, someone has to supplant themselves where oh, Kotaku will. Uh, no longer be. That is what Inverse is trying to do, and it is so painfully obvious and so poorly done. Anybody that's taken any monicum of just high school debate can see the inherent flaws and fallacies in every argument they try and make. But they're on the right side of history because they look at things from a left-leaning perspective and they've got papers that say doctor on it. I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments down below or let me know on X where you can find me at Bolt the Word. And please do subscribe. I am a nerdy news channel. I cover nerdy news every day. Not always about Stellar Blade video games or Gamergate 2. But again, that's a hot button topic right now. I absolutely had to cover this one. Had to share it with you because it's just so funny. That being said, later today at 2 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, we're going to cover the Damon Mills situation with Anime Expo. So make sure to uh, uh, make, mark your notifications for that. Hit that subscribe button. Join me on Instagram at wordsparadise underscore Leon and become a member for $4.99 a month. You can join the Discord, choose the articles that I cover on a day-to-day -day basis, choose what videos I react to on my Friday night live streams, and just all around become part of the Vital Idols, the growing Vital Idol community. It's absolutely worth it, but until next time, it's all here in the Nerdosphere, and this has been Words of Paradise.